Hey, I'm Tom Colicchio, and this is my Meetup with Meter. So today, I'm calling this Rolling with Meter because we're, we're doing three different meats. We're doing rabbit, we're doing lamb, and we're doing pork. All boned out and then all going to be rolled up, tied, and roasted. Originally, I was going to do three separate dishes, but as we started cooking them, and I realized I can use three different probes and hook it up to the same phone, and you can actually track each three cooks, did a great job of showcasing not only that you can track three things at one time, but then also when we talked about carryover cooking and then the idea of resting, the meter does that for you. So not, not only are you learning dishes, but you're really learning how to cook, and you know, the meter, the meter does that. Okay, so number one, I am a huge fan of the meter. This is the meter. Um, you know, too often people try to cook to time and it's much more important to cook to temperature. Um, you never know actually how hot your oven really is, how cold it is, it can be off a little bit. Uh, even the size of the pan could actually change the amount of time something takes to cook. Also these days, uh, a, a lot of chefs were actually cooking at much lower temperatures. So if you're cooking at a lower temperature, it could take a lot more time to actually cook something. Um, and it actually cooks nicer if you cook it slower. Um, so this is why it's so important to have an accurate thermometer. Um, what I love about the meter is it actually hooks up to your smartphone. Um, it's much more accurate. Plus, not only do you get the internal temperature, but you also get the ambient temperature in the oven, which then can give you a, a, a way to actually know when to take your food out. Um, because most people also don't realize that once you take your, your meat out of the oven, the temperature still increases. Um, and so it'll compensate for that too. So it's really great. So anyway, we're here. And so we're gonna do a few different things. I'm gonna call it rolling with the meter because everything that you see today is going to be rolled. Um, and so we're gonna start with the other, other white meat, rabbit. One of my favorite meats. And you can see we already boned it out. Now this is a little tricky to do this. Um, and uh, uh, we actually come from the underside of the rabbit, bone it out, but still leave the whole thing intact, including the skin on the outside. So it's a little tricky. So that's how we start. So this is the, the loin, this is the entire loin. Um, so th this is the, the loin portions, tenderloins also on here, and that's it. Now, separately what we do, all of the, um, all of the, the, the meat from the forelegs and some of the hind legs, we make a, a rabbit mousse. This is the mousse. And then we're just gonna pipe it in here. Okay. Uh, we have a little salt. We're gonna add a little pepper to this. And this is the other neat thing that we're gonna use today. So this is called Activa. It's actually a, it, otherwise known as meat glue. Um, and this will help seal uh, the rabbit. So we're gonna put a little bit, just a little bit on. It has no flavor at all. It won't change the texture, but what it'll do is help to keep this sealed. Okay. And then we just simply Roll it up. Now that we have our rabbit ready to go, what I want to do is wrap this with a little bit of pancetta. Uh, the rabbit's really, really lean, so I want a little fat wrapped around it so, so when it roasts, it stays nice and moist. And what we do is we take the pancetta, and obviously the pancetta is rolled, but we unroll it like so. And we're just going to lay it out. Take another piece. This also, if you don't have pancetta, you can do this with bacon. It's fine, especially un un uncured bacon, if it's just smoked. Uh, you'll definitely add a, a, a smoky element to the dish, but it's fine if you don't have pancetta. And we're just gonna... and roll this up. Okay, now once it's rolled up, you get some, some plastic wrap. And then we take it, the ends, and just roll it up. And this, when you roll it up like this, now it, it sort of tightens it up. You'll see how it plumps it real, it plumps it up. And we just tuck the end, ends under. Now, 
This is ready. What we do when we do the rabbit, we set this first. So I'm gonna put this in simmering water for just a couple minutes, just firms it up, ready to go. Then we cool it down and then it's ready to roast. So let's put this aside right now and we'll get this ready to roast. So I got into the food world when I was probably 13 years old. Um, my first job, I, I cooked at home when I was a kid. It's just, I saw my mother making pancakes one day and I said, well, I think I can do this, it's pretty easy. And started cooking at home. I think at the age of 14, I had a job at a snack bar. So it was like fast food. We were doing like, you know, burgers and grilled cheese and steak sandwiches and sausage and peppers at an Italian swim club that my parents belonged to. And so I would go in there and start, you know, work in the morning around 10 o'clock and just prep and I was a short order cook. And it was a blast. It was the best job I've ever had in my life. And I mean, that was my introduction to professional uh, cooking. And then from there, I, uh, I took a job. At the age of 15, I started working in restaurants. Um, and then as soon as I graduated high school, I started working in kitchens. And, and that was it. So I've been doing this for almost 40 years now. So yeah, it's, it's a, lot of, uh, a lot of time on my feet, yeah. So now we have our rabbit loin. Um, again, wrapped in pancetta. Rabbit loin wrapped in pancetta. Again, we set this. So we actually blanched this for about, you know, two or three minutes um, in the plastic wrap. Uh, let it sit overnight and then unwrapped it, ready to go. It just kind of seals everything together. Um, salt. We take the meter out. And it's going to go right there. Stick it in the side. Ready to roast. We're going to set up the cook. Now, there's no rabbit on this one. There's an, there's, believe it or not, there's an alligator, but there's no rabbit. But we're gonna hit the alligator because it's really other is the alligator. Um, and we're gonna put in other, there's a thing for other meat. And we're gonna put in roast. And it's saying 125 and start to cook. There we go. This, same thing, a good amount of oil. I don't want this pan really too hot because it'll have a, ten a tendency of burning right through the pancetta. So we're gonna take this nice and easy. This is almost a cool pan. This will not stick though. There's enough oil in there. It's warm, but it's not gonna stick. So we're gonna really take our time with this. I know everybody wants to see flames shooting out. And I know everybody wants to see, you know, this high sear. Sometimes that's fine. If you're working on a grill, that's all great. Um, but when you're roasting meat, sometimes gentler is better. Uh, we'll get that, it'll brown even in a low oven, and then also down the road, after it comes out of the oven, we can also, you know, then crank the oven up and put it back in to get, if you want more color on it. Um, same thing with, with uh, any of these roasts. If you want to coat the outside with any kind of spices, any kind of rubs, feel free to do that as well. Again, these are just guidelines. You know, make, make, it, make it your own. Uh, you know, we stuffed the rabbit with that mousse. That's fine, you can flavor that mousse with anything. We had some pistachio nuts in there. We had some herbs and garlic, um, but really you could do whatever you like. Um, plus you can also add other things besides the stuffing or even between the stuffing if you like. Um, one thing I love to do is take figs, chop up figs when they're in season, um, cook them down so they're not as, as wet, cook them down a little bit and put that inside the, uh, the rabbit and roll that up. So again, the sky's the limits. Apples, any kind of fruit, apricots, Dry fruits um, can go inside there. Uh, really, there's, there's really limitless, you know, what you can actually put inside uh, once you understand the technique. And the same thing, right? We're not gonna sear this right now. I just wanna get a little heat in it. It's gonna go right in the oven. Okay. So in this oven for the rabbit, 350 is fine, 375 is fine, but we'll know exactly how long it's gonna take. This is on the rabbit now, an internal temperature of 66 degrees. We're targeting 125. The ambient temperature right now is 137, but it just went in the oven now, so it's gonna start to climb pretty quickly. And you just kinda take your time and you don't have to poke your head in the oven. You don't have to go in there and you know touch it like I, like I usually do. I could sit here and just kinda, at this point, if I were home cooking, I would open up a bottle of wine. I would sit back and kinda look at my, look at my smartphone connected to the meter and I have confidence that I will nail these temperatures. So when I was a kid, I would go fishing a lot, I still do. Um, but I would go fishing with my grandfather. And my grandfather would always wake me up, you know, we'd leave the house at like three o'clock in the morning. And when he'd wake me up, he had already started making breakfast and breakfast was always um, like a frittata, although he never called it a frittata back then, but it was like usually peppers and eggs and frittata. And the smell of peppers and onions cooking 
brings me right there to my grandfather's house, you know, the morning waking up before going fishing. And to this day, whenever I go fishing, that's exactly what I make. While we're at this, let me check on my, my rabbit. Ooh. Rabbit's gotta come out too. There's our rabbit, ready to go. Our pants had opened up a little bit, but it's okay. So let's just sit there and let that rest too. That's at 118 out of the oven. It's gonna go up to 125. Food brings people together, and this is part of the reason why I actually cook. You know, I mentioned earlier that I fish. When I used to go fish with my grandfather, if we went out, we would, we would clam and, and crab and, and fish. And usually if we caught like, you know, a bushel or two crabs and a bushel of clams, we had a lot of food. And so that night when we got home, my job was to clean all the fish. I had two jobs actually. I had to clean the fish when I got home. Um, and my, my other job was keeping my grandfather awake on the ride home. Um, which, think about it nowadays. Here's like a, a 10 year old kid sitting in the front seat of the car, probably without a seatbelt on, right? <laughs> Nudging my grandfather whenever he fell asleep. But also we would have, um, extended family and friends over for that dinner. The first thing that we talked about was the fishing trip, you know, the fish that got away and you know, how big they were. And, and so, but I, I saw that the power that food had to bring all these people around the table. And to this day, it still does that. I'll take the meter out. I'm just gonna go right down the center here. There we go. There's our rabbit, you can see the moose in there. In the moose, we had some of the liver and some of the kidney. The rabbit loins on both sides. There we go. There's our other other white meat, the rabbit. You hear this a shot? Again, you see not a lot of juices coming out. All the juices are in the center. It's actually just to the point where the mousse is cooked. The outside is still nice and juicy and moist. Really nice cook on this. Mm -hmm. 